All right, we are at Jim Kovaleski's house. So, oh, my lighting just got all jacked up. But everybody remembers Jim. Um, I brought Justin Rhodes here while he was in town, the nomadic farmer. So I want to point out a couple things to you. I want to show you what Jim's place looks like when he's out of town. Man, I'm having fun making these videos. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll, I'll thank Justin Rhodes again for getting me doing these, you know, really giving me the push and kind of uh, creating this monster. So thank you, Justin. I love you, bro. And uh, Jim, thank you. You've been a wealth of knowledge in my life also. Um, you know, Jim is a mentor for me, so Jim's kind of what opened my world. This is the neighbor's house, and Jim used to farm this pretty heavily. That's a large moringa right there. You can see the stump on it. Constantly gets topped out and harvested for the leaves. Now, I had just done a video with the greenhouse, the black mat. I did another video where we're doing expansion of the nursery at the black mat. Jim puts this down on his shell driveway, you know, to keep these weeds at bay. So he'd have to come back, pull all these weeds if he didn't put this black mat down. And he'll pull this up, fold it up, put it down again before he leaves next year. So I think he's been gone here for, you know, three months now. That's a nice low quat. He'll be harvesting from that next year. Papaya, not a lot of ground covers over on this property, but his main growing area is down over there. So we'll go there next. It's a small pond over here on this side. The place is really dripping in fruit. So here's that black mat again. You know, it's doing a really good job of protecting that sidewalk from just coming up and getting infested with weeds. I love this little house. Definitely a cute little pad Jim has here. The uh, Barbados cherry right here is just completely covered in cherries, flowers. Um, Jim, you're missing out. You know, one of the things that I, uh, I get to do while I'm here is actually harvest some of this fruit so Jim gave me a list of things to check out while I was here he said the mango might have fruit he said the longin might have fruit um, the carambola has fruit the Barbados cherry has fruit so well these little cherries I did a video just on this tree um, super high in vitamin C originally you know grown for acerola so one cherry is equivalent to eating five oranges vitamin C content wise and you could see I mean this thing Covered in beneficial insects, covered in cherries. It's doing really well right now. Here's that sweet potato ground cover. That looks like a persimmon. Cherry of the Rio Grande, another moringa. Whoops, we might score some figs too. Hmm. Not quite ready yet. Those are almost there. A little bit on the small side. There's the moringa. There's the turmeric. There's that sweet potato ground cover. Some grapes growing over here. You can see there's that edible yam. So this makes a big tuber under the ground. Different variety than the one I have, but this is probably a you know Diascora lata. This is a Suriname cherry fedge. By fedge, I mean a food hedge. This barrier was probably here before they bought the house. This is commonly planted as a hedge, and there's a black grafted variety or just this plain red one. And they can be really nice. I got the guys back here pulling some weeds. There wasn't much back here. This is a shadier part of the farm. You know, not a lot of sun pressure. The ground is not very well covered in ground covers. You know, it's a, it's a more shaded area. Jim normally pulls his truck in here and parks when he gets back in town. I believe this is that Fuang Tung Carambola. Completely loaded. Have you all tried one yet? No. No Carambola? So when we got here, this whole area had some weeds on it and they were getting ready to set seed. And so if we didn't get those out, those seeds would have just created some more weeds. We've only been here about five minutes, they're already gone. There's some Malabar spinach. I believe Jim did tell us to get rid of this. This is that loofah. He said if we saw this in the back, um, you know, it can, it can be quite messy. It will set seed, it'll get everywhere. Come back again the next year. So we will pull that out of here and compost that for him. Probably not much to it. This is the backyard. This is where Jim does his soil blocks. That's his compost pile. That's an avocado, I think he told me, that came up from seed. There's that Turk's cap hibiscus. Some spiral ginger. There's a big longin tree. And like I said, that carambola is just covered in fruit. I'm sure there's some ripe ones on here. Ian, did you find us a ripe one? one Come on, get me one. What's ripening? Cut it open. All right, all right. He said there's one by the top. Oh, yeah, look at that really orange one. So, Jim... 
We're gonna pull all the guys over and try one of your fruits. You better hang tight. It's going down. So this thing's dripping. Here's another one of those Saranam cherry hedges or fedges, fedge, food hedge. So beautiful new growth on these. Seems to be doing really nice in the dappled light. They can also handle full sun. Down in South Florida, you know, these can be considered invasive um, because the birds can eat them, you know, drop the seeds and, you know, they come up in the woods. So there's that Biden's and in the shade, it doesn't really get a flower on it, but over on the other garden, you know, this is what one of the main concerns that we want to get out of here today. This gets little seeds that come out everywhere. Uh oh. And they can spread, you know, all over the yard. So we'll get them before they set seed. Try to stop the problem before it happens. Not really spending a lot of time over here. Ian, you got the test ready? Yeah. All right, guys, come on over. Wait, who's this right here? Hey, where'd you come from? North Carolina. North Carolina? I think I saw you in a Justin Rhodes video. Yeah. What's your name again? Casey. Casey, what's the name of your farm? Honey Tree Homestead. Honey Tree Homestead, Homestead right? Stuff, and you're yeah. trying to do some edible landscaping, right? Mm hmm definitely well this yeah. guy just showed up at the farm he yeah. wants to learn he's over here at Jim's house checking it out had to come out and see it for real uh oh so he cut that thing like an orange I've never seen him cut like that Ian are you getting tricky on me here today I'm trying to split him up a little bit all right that's good pretty good mm -hmm. all right good, really. so we haven't done anything yet here in the front yard of the small house but not the main production garden as you can see, there's not a lot of weed pressure. This is fairly shaded up in here. You know, a lot, a lot of light getting in. A little bit of sweet potato, but not a lot of pressure. So, we're good. Okay, buddy, how are you? Broccoli George, right? All right. The old neighbor. So we got a little bit of that Biden's over here. A little bit of weeds around the edge of the pond, and they're just starting to flower. They're starting to seed. You know, this is a highly medicinal plant. I think this is the number two or three, four, you know, beef forage plant in the state of Florida. They love those little aster-like flowers. Um, we manage this in some areas of my farm, but, you know, in a residential setting to, you know, manage some of these Bidens, that can be tough. So we're going to pull these out of here, get the weed seeds out. You know, we just went through the backyard in five minutes. We'll probably spend five minutes out here. Got a couple of small Brazilian peppers. We'll try to get those from the root. Those are invasive, typically spread by a bird. And I don't even think this is sweet potato. This is that morning glory, kind of like the sweet potato look like. All right, we're done here. As you can see, this is Jim's main production area. So he's really shifted here over the last year and a half, two years since his other property got so shady and recently started, you know, farming the house next to his mom. So that's his mom's house over there on the corner. And this is his ex-wife's house and as you can see it's a jungle um, the sweet potato is pretty tall I'm not seeing a lot of weeds I'm actually there's a little bit of weed pressure right there tiny little bit right there but it's mostly dominantly sweet potato so you can see the guys are kind of pulling the potatoes down out of the peach tree a little bit but you know we'll probably clear the path we'll open that up so you can walk through And the sweet potato is doing really well. So, you know, Jim's not here to actually eat the leaves. But as you can see, you know, when he comes back, he's going to have lots of potatoes to harvest. Looks like he's also got a, maybe another cover crop mixed in there. No, that's all sweet potato. And here's that black mat again. So, you know, Jim doesn't want to come home and weed a driveway. Can you blame him? You know, so he puts this black mat down on here. Um, I do believe that... Uh, you know, in the, in the Justin Rhodes video, one of the comments were, you know, I bet it looks like crap while he's out of town, you know, because Jim's a snowbird. Um, not really a snowbird, but he farms in, you know, Maine half the year and farms down here half the year. And nobody's here to maintain it while he's gone. His mom's up in Maine with him. Nobody's taking care of the house next door. Um, but I think it really comes down to, you know, what your idea of a, a mess is or what your idea of looking like crap is. You know, I think personally, a yard sprayed in chemicals, you know, that's just cut every day and has irrigation looks like crap. Um, you know, it's, it really comes down to, I think, personal preference. You know, I mean, this is a jungle. It's in an undeed restricted area. Um, you know, it's attracting beneficial insects. It's, you know, there's no waste of water going on here. There's no chemicals getting sprayed here. Um, you could come here and eat if you wanted to. Somebody could start harvesting these, uh, you know, these sweet potatoes on the regular. These are our cover crop. I think uh, 
I forget what Jim was saying. I have the last video. What he put down out here might have been those iron clay cowpeas or something. So there's a couple of nuts head shoots. You know, not a lot of weed pressure in here. It's definitely starting to kind of grow out towards the road, but not completely. I saw a little bit of weed pressure up by that main path, but like I said, we're trying to get those weeds that are going to seed. Doing just a quick run over one time. Here's a big pecan. He's got a carom bowl over here in the center. There was some more moringa over there. And here's that black mat. So there's the only weed pressure he's gonna have to, you know, worry about when he's coming back. And you know, like I said in my other video, we really try to overlap those. So you know, you might get a weed coming through right where that pin is, but for the most part, you don't get a lot of weeds. Hey, uh, what are you working with over here? Got a couple uh, moringa pods. On so there. I would say that this uh, this moringa is a bit of an overachiever, um, and we should probably harvest these pods and cut this tree back for them. Um, you can see it just uh, take up a couple of pods off the tree for me and show us what we're working with There's a big fig Whoo, so this is probably that pk1 moringa look at the size of that pod Woo! So what do you think two and a half feet? I'd say two, and a half feet. two and a half foot moringa, you know the most terrestrial or most nutritious terrestrial plant in the world so we'll cut this back for him. It looks like it got really heavy, you know, with the giant pods on there. I ended up snapping. They probably had a windstorm. We've had some uh, some vicious winters here, so or vicious winds with all the heavy rains. You know, we're in that monsoonal rain season. Papaya's got flowers on it. Got a guava back here. Here's another mango. There's a loquat here in the center. I think this is that Barbie pink guava, and I don't quite see any fruits on it. But pretty tree, delicious fruit. All right, Jim, it's looking pretty good. I don't know if we're gonna do as much foraging over here. Not really sure when you lost this loquat. I remember you were telling me you thought it had a, a fire blight or something. Definitely um, not looking too good. You know, it's a pretty much a, a sign of death when something dies and the leaves stay stuck to it like that. If they re you know, if they dropped all their leaves, there's a chance it might come back. So, Jim, we're getting we're getting some moringa pods. So, might score some seed for our, uh, our duties, thank you. There's the last of his annual kale, still kind of uh, dragging on, but pretty much done for the most part. You gonna show us that seed, Ian? Yeah, Pull a couple out, bring them to the camera. Please. Moringa seeds. Cool. The seeds from that tree, they say can, uh, you know, make malaria-ridden water. And take make it drinkable so you know in these uh third world countries people take those seeds they go down to that you know dirty water source you know harvest that water put the seeds in there and by the time they get back to their village the seeds act as a flocculant and you know everything all you have to do is boil the water then so all that malaria is supposed to you know suck onto those seeds and then you know the water is supposedly drinkable never tried it for that but that's what they say so here we got some papayas on the tree I definitely just spotted some Saranam cherries. Oh, all right guys, let's do a Saranam cherry tasting for the camera. Woo, we got some ripe ones, Jim. Woo. So this is supposed to be that black variety. Ian, did you see this over here? No, I did not. Mmm. That was delicious. That was really good. Mmm, here's another good one. Look at that. Oh, wow. So there's that egg fig from my last video I made here. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. How is it? You want some of it, Ian? Don't be scared. Put the other side. Mmm. That's fire. All right, a fig with the cherry. Is that the new, uh, the new mix? Mmm. The cherries are really good. Mm -hmm. mm. These are really good. These are really, these are really good. You getting another good one? Where's Casey? Casey, you gotta try this. Casey, you gotta try it. What is it? Tropical cherry. Suriname cherry. All right, Barbados cherry. You're missing out, Jim. We're eating all this good stuff. Give me some virtual love here. Mmm. Delicious. You know, you don't need uh, vitamin C supplements when you have this tree around, so. Covered in flowers. 
little resume page. <laughs> That's crazy. Was that a like or not like? I know it's really healthy, but I'm gonna need a bunch of them. The resin got you? Yeah. Maybe find one on the ground that's a little more ripe. I bet you'd have a, uh, a different opinion, yeah. Is there one down on the ground for him? A really, really dark one, like that half one right there probably tastes good. Oh, here, try this one. I'm seeing some flies down here on the ground. I guess there's probably a couple of figs. Oh, wow. Here's another one that split. Was that any good? Yeah, that's a lot better. A lot better? Okay, so you really got to get those cherries at the right stage. It makes a, uh, a night and day difference. Oh, oh, Jim was saying there might be a mango here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Woo. all right, I get this if I, uh, if we want to harvest it. And we're looking for a brown stem. We're looking for a little sap coming out of the top. And the stem looks like it's just starting to turn brown, but I see a lot of green in it. Really probably don't want to rush that one. Really nice blush. I think this is a Kent. I don't remember. What are you working with, Kent? That looks like one of my old tags from Zills. Oh, here's another uh, full Carambola, Jim. This one's doing really well. Definitely like being in this protected area on the side of the yard, hidden in the back. So there's turmeric coming down here along the fence. Some more of that yam, loquat, and uh, mango that might have just a couple more weeks. So I'm coming back, don't worry. Oh, there's a nice big one up top, two of them. So here's that Barbie pink guava. Just fell off? That's beautiful. Mmm, these smell so fragrant. We'll take this home, let it ripen up a little more. Look at these beautiful flowers. All right, Jim, you're missing your guava. You're lucky this thing uh, fruits multiple times a year. So there's big ones on here right now like this. You know, there's ones in little baby stage. There's one flowering. So they're coming and going nonstop here. Wow, so Jim, you didn't mess around with the cover crop this year. Um, uh, here's one, you know, patch of weeds you can see. Not really bad though, you know. The whole idea is, you know, you, you protect the soil and you don't get the weeds. And I am not seeing a lot of weed pressure. Um, you know, right here on the edge where there's no protection. Okay, we've got a little patch of weeds. We've got a little patch right here coming out of that crack. You know, nature will find a way, but we'll clear this path. We'll get those weeds out of there with those seed heads on them. And we're done here. This is a quick run through. And this is definitely all cover crop now that I'm looking at it. You can see those beans are sticking up a lot higher. So, Jim Kovaleski's front yard. Place is looking pretty good. Jim, you're definitely going to have some taters when you get back. And I'm impressed. No weed pressure. So, you know, for those haters out there making those comments, you know. But the place looks like crap while you're out of town, Jim. You know, I disagree. You know, I, maybe your idea of looking good as a chemicalized yard, you know, sprayed, sprayed on a you know monthly basis and irrigated and pay somebody to cut. I mean, you know, there's being no money wasted here. You know, this is food that's growing. It's attracting beneficial insects. It's useful. Um, so it really comes down to you know what your idea of pretty is. You know, if you all like, you know, the nice prim and proper yard, those HOAs are there for you. You know, if you don't. You find the unincorporated areas like this where you can do this in the front yard and you know the neighbors aren't mad it doesn't look bad you know it's, it's pleasing it's inviting they don't call this the garden block for you know no reason there's a lot of people putting gardens in over here a lot of people wanting to come live here because of what jim has done what jim is doing there's a i think a pomegranate maybe just barely hanging on almost looks like it's rootstock but place is looking good um for th those that don't know we are uh Heading up to see Jim in Maine in like 10, 15 days now. So I'll be in Maine from the end of July to about August 7th. So hold tight. We're going to uh, we're going to make some videos on what Jim's doing out there. We're going to document this. We're going to get it out to the world. You know, I feel like down here in the South, you know, Jim's probably one of the best market gardeners I've met. Um, and I've been up to Maine, you know, and he's uh, he's doing some amazing things up there. So. Um, you know, I, I believe that he's doing the best of both worlds, so, you know, he really has a lot to offer. So, this is the difference between no weed mat on the driveway and a weed mat on the driveway. Alright, we don't need to go too far. Y'all got the idea, I mean, we can either support 
you know, Monsanto and spray Roundup, or we come up with solutions like this. It's gonna be a lot of work to hand pull this. You know, the typical homeowner would be spraying this driveway, so this is the solution while you leave town. I don't think it looks that bad. It actually looks pretty good. It's welcoming, you know, would you rather see a shell driveway with dead weeds sprayed from Roundup? Or some black mat, so this black mat rocks. So, Jim Kovaleski's yard, Newport Ritchie. We're about done, probably gonna spend about an hour and 10 minutes here with four guys, um, doing a little bit of cutback on the Moringa, like I said, a little bit of weeding, and we're out. So, I'll be seeing Jim here in a little bit. Gonna be heading up there in maybe about 10 to 15 days, and we're gonna document everything that he has going on up there. Going to see a couple of uh, neat apple growers in the area, so I can't wait to get back up and see Jim. It's beautiful up there. You can see can you know, Canada from his camp. It's really something else. Um, but this is his Florida house. This is what it's looking like while he's gone. You know, you could call this uh, fallow or sleeping. Um, things are just growing while he's here, you know. Sweet potatoes are coming. All right, Casey, what do you think? You've seen it on camera? Yeah, You've no. seen it in real life? Is it all it's cracked up to be? Yeah, I think it's the future of landscape and this is the way to go. Yeah, Jim's got something going on here? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Does it look a mess? I mean, did you feel like it was sloppy when you got here? Not really. Inviting? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, I mean, it's people like to be obsessed with lawns, so it ain't a green lawn, <laughs> but it's green and you can eat it. I, that's what I said. You know, I feel like um, you know, if you want that green yard, you move to the HOA. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those comments in his video were like, "I bet it looks like crap while you're out of town," you know. And no, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad at all. You know, it's inviting. You know, there's been butterflies and bees. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff here. And if you're home, you could be eating the sweet potato leaves. So. It's uh, yeah. definitely inviting. So we have a warped view on how we view urban landscapes. It's pretty sad, isn't it? We could change a lot just by buying local food and quit spraying your lawn. I agree. And let things. We all think our king. We all think we're kings with these uh, fancy green yards, yeah, with these nice straight lines. You know. Yeah. So Casey's also cutting a little grass, and you know, for you guys out there, bit. you know, looking yeah. to get one of these businesses going, you know. I'm not against cutting grass, you know, I think if it's going to get you away from that corporate job, if it's going to make you a supplement of income, you're working for yourself, you're working out there in nature, you choose if you want to use chemicals, you know, what are you, one day a week right now with the grass? Yeah, the rest is landscape and some Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's on his own, he works for himself, he's not working for the man, so, nope. I mean, if you got to cut a little grass to make a buck, put some food on the table, I mean, that's what you got to do, so. Alright, we're out, Jim Kovaleski, we'll see you in Maine, place is beautiful. All right, all right, Jim, we got you weeded. We're about done, cleared some paths. Going to get the truck, and we're out of here. So I scored some Moringa pods, scored some Carambola, some Barbados cherries, some Suriname cherries, a guava. Thanks for uh, sharing the wealth while we came over here today. So we'll see you in Maine here shortly.